and welcome back everybody. We are working on a design for Nathan from Out of the Woods and what he's wanting to build is a timber frame sharpening shop. Uh, it's going to get built on the same slab I believe that his kiln sets on. So we're going to get started. This is a very basic, uh, real basic timber layout. Nothing real hard about this. This is something that you could easily figure out and build for yourself. So what we're going to do in this series of videos is we're going to start real simple and then we're just going to uh, we're going to move along and I will show you step by step how you go about figuring your loads where you can find the engineering calculators how to use those calculators and so on and so forth now a lot of people start with an idea that they want to use a certain type of certain size of lumber things like that now Nathan is going to be using hemlock which is a pretty strong lumber, pretty strong species. It does have its own challenges as far as structural, uh, or not really, structurally it's a very sound wood to use, but it's the stability of the material that you kind of have to worry about. And that's something, uh, if I was framing with, him, with hemlock, I'd rather get it all cut at once and get everything put up as quick as I can at once so everything can shift and move and dry and twist together properly. Things like white pine, Douglas fir, you don't have to worry about that as much, but you do have to worry uh, about that quite a bit with hemlock and white oak and things like that just because it is such a high moisture content wood. So Nathan had a couple of a wish lists of how he wanted to start this frame. He had a couple ideas in his head of what material sizes to use and Everybody has a preconceived notion of what they want to use for timber sizes. Now, his, his frame is very small. It's 13 foot 6 inches wide by 16 feet long. Now, if some of you are going to question the 13 foot 6 inches wide, that is because the slab is pre-existing. It's been there a long time, and that's what he has to work with. So, obviously, he wants to cover the whole slab, and that, you know, and so forth. So... That's the size that we're going to work with. It's going to make things a little odd, but not terribly bad for us. So Nathan's first idea was for his wall posts. He wants to use 8 by 8 wall posts. Now for a structure this small, he should be all right. I mean, his, uh, his live load in the area he lives in, which is the load that's going to be changing, is 25 pounds per square foot. So what we want to do... We want to get an idea of this frame, but we have to design it from the roof down once we get some initial drawings done. So first thing we're going to do is, now this is the this is the wall post layout for the first floor. It's going to be a simple three bent building. So here's our first floor layout as far as posts go. There's only six posts. We have one on each corner. And you have your middle. So this post and this post are going to be part of a bent. We'll call that bent number one. This will be bent number two. And this will be bent number three. So we've got that laid out. So what we want to do now, I want to get an idea of what one of these bents are going to look like as far as uh, just pretty much what it's going to look like. So here's 
as a reminder to love your life that's pouring into you. And so my friend, let me tell you once again, and you know that it's true. Forget about seeing it. So here, this would probably be the back wall of his sharpening shop. Now, this is going to be one of the eave walls. We don't have the door shown in here. The other eave wall is pretty much going to be a mirror image, except for a couple of these girts will be left out in order for him to have a door going into there. So, like I said earlier on in the video, this is all just kind of guesstimation. This is how I would like it to go. This is the size timbers I feel would work well, but we don't know for sure until we run all this stuff through the load calculators. But in order for me to run all this stuff through the load calculators and determine that it's the right size, I need a design to work with and to make changes to to begin with. Now, I am brand new to SketchUp. This is really the first time I've had any luck with SketchUp trying to draw something um, once I figured out that I could do two-dimensional in this and draw prints how I'm used to drawing them up by hand kind of makes it a lot easier. Now you're going to notice, let me uh, just so I don't move things here, let me do a little zooming in here. You're going to notice that we are showing housings here through all of this. We're showing half inch, oops, don't want that. We're showing half inch housings. So you have a half inch housing there, you have a half inch there, half inch there, so on and so forth. Now what we have is for these top braces so that we don't run into this girt that goes across here, we have a 30 by 30 inch layout on these. So your brace ends up being 42 and 7 16 inches long from, you know, from this point here down to that point there. You can find that information on your framing square if you own one with the tables. Now you're also going to notice that these guys here I'm not showing pegs here. Reason being for that, you have big through mortises right here for your tie beams. I really don't want to put a three inch mortise into this on top of my half inch housing and run right through that tenon. I want that to be a through tenon. So I really want that to, want to make sure I have enough relish on the end of that tenon to hold the structure together. Because remember, most of your thrust 
your after thrust is going to work against this joint right here, this tie beam to wall post connection. So we want to keep that in mind. Now I probably have enough room on this side, but there again, I don't want to take any more out of this post than I have to, especially right here, because we're already taking out a pretty good chunk all the way through it. Now that's something else you have to keep in mind when you're sizing these timbers, is how much meat that you're going to be taking out of this thing. No, because you do not want to sacrifice strength in order to uh, to save yourself on some sizes of timbers. You're only going to build these things once, you hope. You know, if you do it right, it should be a one-time deal. So make sure you take the time to get the right materials in there, the right sizes. So these, like on my frame, because of where these, I line these up so that my flooring can catch the top of them as a nailer. So I timber locked these into my frame. I put them in a, a housing and I timber locked them. But down here, you look at these girts as we move down, the first three coming up from the bottom, we have put, these are going to have three inch tenons on them all the way through. So that way you can peg those. It's going to be a two by three tenon. So it's going to be a, uh, I work these a little bit different for the, the peg layout. I don't do, uh, I come in an inch and a half and kind of try to hit that tenon in the middle. And I, you know, I come up three inches on these, try to hit them in the middle. But that is where we are at. And believe it or not, between this one and the first couple, I have hours into this. <laughs> so... I'm probably going to call it a night on this one. And we're going to continue on with this design series. So this is just kind of the first step. Figuring out how you want it to look. Figuring out what your... Uh, well, let's see here. So the first step we started with tonight... I'm just doing kind of where the wall posts are going to sit on his slab. You know, we're not worried about, I wasn't worried about girts. I wasn't worried about tie beams on this one, windows, doors, any of that stuff. We're just strictly worried about where the post's going to sit, what's the footprint going to look like. And then we have some distances now that we've done that. We know our overall length of this is 16 feet. We also have some distances now where we can go. We know that when we go to set that first wall post, it's going to be an 8-inch post. Well, from that edge of the 8-inch post, it's going to be 7 feet to the next one. Now, say this is only 7.5 inches, we're just going to measure from this outside corner to there, and it should end up being 7 feet 8 inches. And it'll be the same thing with this guy here. So it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Now we also, our unsupported span on these tie beams is going to be 12 feet 2 inches. General rule of thumb for good design practice is they don't like more than 12 feet for an unsupported span. But only 2 inches over, I think will be all right. Now I made that an 8 by 12 hemlock, and that should handle it no problems. No, but we will run all this stuff through the load calculator. So anyway, next time we come back, we have showed you the first the first step. We'll show you, let's see what we did here. We showed you the wall post step, where you're going to put them. We'll kind of give you the design, what a bent will probably look like. This is all subject to change, mind you. And then on the final one tonight, oh, let's see. The final one tonight, we showed you what one of the eave walls is going to look like without doors or windows or any of that. And this is all just, this is all subject to change. Now, if I go to put these numbers in the load calculators, the engineering calculators, and it does not handle the stresses that the weights are going to put on this, obviously we're going to have to make some changes. But that being said, this frame being so small and 
him using hemlock, which is a very strong species of wood. Now, his timbers are going to be quite a bit smaller than what you would find in a white pine frame. But the other thing you also have to remember, a white pine frame is going to have a much lighter dead load. That is the load of your materials. So you got to keep that in mind because you're building these things to green weight. And that's probably the, the smartest way you can do it because you think an inch per year of thickness, how many years it's actually going to take your timbers to dry out, to lighten up. So, I mean, you, you're talking 10, 12, 14 years for it to dry all the way out. It may not take that long. I mean, your your ambient conditions are going to dictate a lot of that. But the, oh, I see if I got a couple pegs on this one. I'll have to change that. But anyway... I'm rambling on. This is our first video in this series. Again, this is the uh, we're starting our designing phase for Nathan from Out of the Woods uh, Band Sharpening Shop. So we've made some good progress tonight. We I got the final dimensions from Nathan tonight. Um, we got some preferences that he wanted, and we're gonna run with it. So anyway. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. I'm sorry this isn't a lot of hands-on, me being laid up right now with a broken leg. We're going to be doing a lot of these for a little while. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it, everybody. I will see you on the other side.